You know, during a dog fight, there isn't a referee and a bell does not go off every three minutes. These dogs fight till death or dismemberment. This dog, if loose, is looking for another form of uh, combat, so to speak. That's what it's been trained to do. And his next opponent could be your little sister walking down the street, unbeknownst to her, may become the prey of that trained fighting dog. He doesn't know the difference. He just sees it as another bout. Every day, our lives touch and are touched by other living things. Our family, our friends, our pets. We enjoy spending time with them. We take comfort in their love and affection. We wish only the best for them. Similarly, we want our communities to be secure, enjoyable places to live in. When we go to school, or work, or just out to play, we expect our neighborhood to be safe. Sometimes, though, a community can fall victim to a culture of violence. Criminals and gangs commit crimes against people, animals, property. The entire community suffers as a result. One of the more insidious examples of this culture of violence is the practice of dogfighting. I attended my first dogfight when I was in fourth or fifth grade, and I remember it um, today just like it was yesterday. Um, the person that took me to the dogfight uh, was very close to me. I remember him taking me with the promise that I would have to definitely keep silent about this and tell no one. Um, and I remember very um, much the dogs going at each other, tearing into each other, biting each other, crying. And I guess my feeling was at being in fourth grade, I was too far away from home to just walk. And I was uh, feeling scared just to be there. It's something that at the age of 36 and a third grade teacher that I still remember and still would like to distance myself from if I could. People who fight animals are not only cruel, they are criminals. Dog fighting is illegal. It exists in big cities and in small communities. It is practiced by gang members and non-gang members alike. Dog fights may be spontaneous happenings or very organized events. Spontaneous dog fights often occur in the open, in an alley, a yard, an empty lot, usually on the spur of the moment and may not last very long. These spontaneous fights usually involve gambling and drug activity. My friend's dog died at me. Someone we know at school may have even tried to use a favorite pet to make a few bucks. A lost cause for everyone involved. Bite mark. Bite marks from, from his leg and down, and then like a hole in his ear. And um, like, um, like part of, half, part of his skin from the cheek was ripped out. Organized dog fights, on the other hand, are held in secluded locations. The last thing the organizers want to attract is the police. These fights are particularly brutal and violent, the dogs often fighting for hours on end. These organized dog fights include heavy betting and money exchange, and weapons are usually present. Whether a fight is spontaneous or organized, the most obvious immediate victims of cruelty are the animals. Fights often result in serious injury or death for the participants. These animals rarely receive veterinary care. Fighters don't want to risk discovery of their illegal activity, nor do they want to waste money as they see it on their dogs, especially on those they feel are losers. Losers may be tortured, starved, or just killed outright by their owner. My day as a uh, humane investigator usually begins with a complaint received uh, through our switchboard here in regards to cruelty to an animal 
and in most cases a dog or a cat. That report might reflect dogs or cats being kept in a backyard in unsanitary or inhumane conditions. Uh, dogs uh, that are too skinny, are not being fed properly, or not being taken care of. Dogs that appear to be emaciated and have uh, what we might call bite marks about their head and body, uh, which may reflect that they possibly have been utilized in dog fighting. Um, we have to make a decision right then and there as to whether we're going to uh, engage in a conversation with the alleged owners or remove those dogs immediately for their own well-being and for the well-being of those in the neighborhood, the rest of the community. Dog fighting is not a sport. There are no referees to enforce rules. There are no good, clean fights, and often the dogs do not live to fight another day. But the dogs that are forced to fight are not the only animals facing danger. Stray dogs and cats may be captured and used as bait for training fighting dogs. Family pets may be stolen from your own neighborhood for the same reason. If a dog fighter cannot capture a stray or steal a pet, he may answer ads in the paper that offer free animals to a good home. Dog fighting in itself is not only responsible for bringing more violence into the community, it's not only responsible for desensitizing the small children, the young children that are involved with it, it is breaking the law. It is responsible also for the senior citizen that's scared to go outside to take the trash because there are dogs wandering throughout the alleyway. Dog fighting promotes fear in the community. People become frightened of being bitten by a dog trained to kill. They also fear the people who own and fight the dogs, and with good reason. Convicted dog fighters often have criminal records that include assault, arson, weapons charges, burglary, even murder. Dog fighting also causes other problems in the community. Illegal kennels create odor and attract flies, mice, and rats. Noise becomes a problem not only from barking dogs and people coming and going at all hours, but from music played very loudly to drown out the sounds of a fight. Neighborhood residents experience a decrease in the quality of life. They may feel trapped, prisoners in their own homes. When a culture of violence descends upon the community, people may come to accept violence as normal. In truth, Violence never needs to be accepted as normal. So what can we do? How can we protect ourselves, our friends and family, our animals, our community? The best weapon against dogfighters is awareness. If you happen to witness a dogfight or be privy to information where they are holding dogfights, I don't think that it's good enough just to walk away from it and pretend that it doesn't exist. I think that there are a number of things that you can do, not only for the safety of those dogs, but also for the minds of our children that might be engaged in it. I think that you could, of course, call the police and let them know where exactly you saw the dog fight going on. I think that you can tell any adult or definitely a, a, a teacher what's going on in your neighborhood, a social worker at school, what's going on in your neighborhood. What would make you be aware that this is uh, possibly a, uh, a fighting dog? Well, they're not walking around with diamond studded necklaces on. They're more than likely going to have a series of heavy chains weighting their necks down that in turn help build up the dog's muscular stature and give him a stronger neck and possibly jaw so that he would go on and become a, a, a more accomplished fighting dog. If you see groups of teenagers or gang members, possible gang members, congregated, having their dogs fight one another or testing them between one another, that's another activity that you should also report. Because a dog fight is happening at that park down the street from your house, 
does not mean that the police department knows about it. These are things that should be reported to the police or to your local humane society or uh, your animal care and control center in, in your town or your city where you live. Just as important as making sure our pets are safe, we must know how to stay safe around loose and stray dogs. Animals that are frightened or feel threatened may be a danger, so never approach an animal you do not know. If a stray dog approaches you, you need to keep a few things in mind. First of all, don't run from the dog. If you run, the dog will chase you. Secondly, do not try to pet the dog. Even though you want to be friendly, when a frightened dog sees your hand coming right at him, he may think you are going to hurt him. Instead, stand very still and quiet. Don't scream, yell, or wave your arms. The dog may want to sniff you. This is how he learns about you. After a while, he will get bored of you, since you're not very interesting. You're just standing there, not doing anything, and he'll move along. If you find yourself in immediate danger, for example, if you're knocked to the ground, curl up into a tight ball and cover your head with your arms. This will help protect you and make you seem like less of a threat to the dog. Once the dog is gone, slowly walk away. Tell an adult about the dog as soon as you can. While strays may be a danger to other people, they are also in danger themselves. Dogs and cats do not belong on the streets and shouldn't be roaming the neighborhood. Dog fighting has become a complicated problem that affects our families, our friends, our pets, our entire community. It is responsible for breeding violence and abuse. It creates fear in the neighborhood. It causes suffering in both humans and non-humans. I mean, you wouldn't like it if somebody came and started punching you in the face and like breaking your nose. So why go to an animal? You should treat the dog like you want to be treated. You should treat it like a person because it is a living creature and it does have feelings. If you could switch places with the dogs, you wouldn't see humans jumping in cages or like in the alley fight each other until, until one of them dies. So you should basically consider like the dog's feelings about this. So I just think it's wrong and it's cruel and it needs to stop. The only way that we're going to stop the madness is if you take a lead role and you become concerned, concerned enough not to turn your back and run away from it, but concerned enough to call an authority figure. You have got to come forward and make a stand. You're the eyes and ears of the community. Without you, we can't stop dog fighting. Each of us is able to take important steps towards ending this violence. By being aware of dog fighting in our neighborhoods, by understanding the dangers associated with dog fighting, by recognizing and reporting the criminals who participate in dog fights, by being a voice for the innocent, we can each do our part to help make the world a safer place for people, for animals, for all of us. <laughs>